Hello everyone and welcome to this installment of our Build Your Simulation CFD IQ part of our webinar series. Uh, today's topic is Scalar Mixing Analyses Part 2. My name is Marwan Azam. I'm a Technical Support Specialist uh, at Autodesk and with me is Amal. She's also a Tech Support Hi. Specialist. Hello, uh, this is Amal. I'm a Technical Support Specialist in Autodesk CFD and I'm based in Munich, Germany. And I'm coming so. live from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right, so Amal, I'll let you start with the uh, presentation yeah. here. So I just wanted to let you know that you can find these slides under the link. Can you show the link, Marwan, please? Sure, it's on our down here. Yeah, down there. So you're going to see shortly after the webinar the slides and uh, as well as uh, the support files uh, that we worked on. So let's see what we're going to talk about today. So uh, today we're going to have uh, two um, parts. Uh, in the first one, uh, I'm going to go through the best practices or the most important points we um, we mentioned in the, the, the first part of the uh, scalar mixing analysis. And then uh, in the second part, we will move to uh, uh, demonstrating uh, example models uh, for me, as an application, I took uh, the air quality check uh, to um, to have to or um, to use the uh, mixing scale analysis. And for Marwan, he uh, simulated a fluid mixing tank. So, um, next slide. So uh, for the part one. Uh, we saw as a first step uh, to, to, to set up a scalar mixing analysis, we have first to define a new material where we uh, let the density changes with scalar. That means uh, we, uh, we have in a table where uh, we have a scalar and density. We define scalar zero and the related density and scalar one for the second fluid and the related density. Then we have to make sure that the uh, the material environment is set to variable so we can uh, or we allow the uh, properties of the fluid to change especially the density and then we have to uh, specify for the scalar uh, uh, the boundary conditions uh, for example in the the first part we had to deal with the the, the, the tank the mixing tank uh, I've done it had it had two inlets uh, on the one inlet I defined a scalar zero and on the second inlet I defined a scalar one for the second fluid and then I simulated it to see how it mixes together and then if you are rather uh, interested or if you're interested in uh, uh, simulating transient simulations you're going to add initial conditions and define the uh, initial condition of uh, the uh, the first fluid. For example, if you have a room initially filled with air and you're going to pump, uh, pump in uh, another fluid, so initially you uh, you say on the fluid, on the volume of the room, I define scalar for example zero and then on the inlet I'm going on the boundary condition on, uh, on the inlet I'm going to define scalar one. Then we have to make sure that uh, the general scalar is turned on in the salt dialog and to set a value for the diffusion coefficient so to allow the two fluids to uh, mix up. If you need more details uh, about uh, how to set up uh, from the beginning the scalar mixing analysis, please watch our last uh, webinar uh, on the first part. Now, One thing I want to add uh, yeah, sure. is, is about the first point here, defining new material where the density changes with scalar. Um, you can have more than one property change with scalar. You can have the viscosity change with scalar if you want, and anything else can be a function of scalar. And as far as density, sometimes uh, you have situations where the density is a function of scalar as well as temperature. Um, but you can only define it to be a function of one or the other. Whichever one has 
more in a, of an effect on the density, let's say, you go with that. So if the scalar has more yeah. effect, uh, of an effect on density, you go with scalar. If temperature has a bigger effect on density, then go with a density that is a function of temperature. Yeah, thanks for it, Marwan. It's it's like it depends on the need of the customer, the end goal or uh, of the simulation. What do you want to see at the end of the simulation, the results? So, um, on our second second part today, uh, we're going to show the models we worked on and some tricks about post-processing the results and manipulating data. So. I'm going to go ahead and make you the presenter. Uh, okay. Well. Yeah, probably it's better. This way. Cool. So, is that okay? Do you see my screen? Go ahead. Marwan, do you see my your... screen? Okay. Yes, okay, we do. Cool. Go ahead. So, uh, my model is um, something very uh, common that you see, uh, that you, uh, yeah, that you live in, or it's a kitchen, it's a room where you have uh, a gas range and a window. Um, the, uh, I'm assuming in here that I have uh, the, the, the buttons of my gas range all turned on, and I want to see the natural gas leakage. Otherwise, I'm only interested here in, um, in simulating the methane uh, flow into the room. And the methane is a component of the natural gas, which uh, goes out from these uh, inlets of the cooker. So let me show you how I have done the setup. So here, initially, I created the uh, material, the new material which is air methane mixed, I call it, and I define for the density zero to, def to say that this is air, and this is the density of the air, and one for methane, 100% methane, and this is the density. So basically you clicked on density and you set that to be a piecewise linear as a function e of scalar. So exactly. You have options. Good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And then I made sure that this is variable to allow the, the, the properties to vary. And so I defined it initially for my window. I defined a, a, material, a volume resistance because I wanted to uh, model a window that is almost closed, not to allow all the, uh, the air that, to, to flow out of the, the room. So as an inlet, I have the inlet of the cooker here. So from here goes the, uh, the, the methane in, and then as the outlet of the room, it's the window, obviously. So if you see here, here are my boundary conditions. I defined velocity and the scalar. I'm going to talk uh, further on the uh, on this value of the scalar to explain it uh, why I've done it like this. So when searching for uh, some information, I get that uh, that the um, or I got that the natural gas uh, contains uh, a big uh, amount of methane. It's the majority of the natural gas, and there are th there are other components like oxygen, helium, hydrogen, propane, even, but they are in in very small quantities. And here, my end goal is um, especially to track only methane. So I have uh, I have two methods to uh, to to simulate it in CFD, and this uh, is depends on the information I have. It's either I have uh, the uh, information about the methane flow rate and the total natural gas going in to the room, 
that means um, I don't uh, I know exactly uh, how much methane goes into the room uh, over the total natural gas or I have only information about the methane fraction and the natural gas uh, for example I know that methane it's 95 percent in the natural gas for uh, the first method, which is when I know the information about uh, the methane flow rate and the natural gas, um, I'm going just to talk briefly about it because I didn't find uh, information about it uh, to be able to simulate it. So uh, just briefly, uh, for the boundary conditions at the inlet, I, def I should define a scalar one. So I would say that I have 100% of methane going in into the room and then to set uh, either volume, mass flow rate or velocity of methane, not of the natural gas that uh, going into the room, only the methane I, I precise. And for the initial conditions, um, my room initially it's filled in with air, so air is represented by scalar zero. Then uh, for the sec uh, second method, uh, which is when I have the information about the, the methane fraction, this information can be in percent, for example, 95 percent, or in uh, particle per million. I looked for this information, and for the methane, it's 47,500 ppm in the natural gas. So from this, I started simulating my model. So for the boundary conditions at the inlet, so here I have uh, information 95% uh, of methane. So at the inlet, I defined only 95% of the methane that should go in, in, the, in the room. And for the flow rate or velocity, I defined the one of the natural gas because these are the only information I have. And then for the initial condition, it's uh, the same thing, uh, scalar zero over the volume of the room. So what you're basically saying, Amal, is 95% of the gas going in is methane. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. It's, it's uh, as methane is 95% of the natural gas, so I, I'm modeling only 95% of methane I'm, because natural gas, it, it has other components. And, and here we have only not. Yeah, and probably you're asking what about the 5%? For me, it's the, the most important thing is to track the methane. So I assumed that 5% is air. Mm -hmm. So Even though I it's can, not really air, but for our purposes, we're going to assume it's air yeah, because we care much exactly. about it. Exactly. This is it. Right. So, at the inlets, I have four inlets. And here I have uh, a velocity. And I defined my scalar to, uh, as you see, to uh, 0 0.95. And notice here that this scalar is a boundary condition because it goes on throughout the analysis. It's not an initial condition. It holds throughout the analysis, whereas yeah. the uh, zero scalar for the air inside the room, that's an initial condition because it starts out at zero, but it's not going to hold its value, which is the whole whole idea about the analysis. You know, We want to see how it right. changes, whereas the right. is not changing, so it's, an, it's a boundary condition, and it stays at that. Precisely, Marwan. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. And even here, though you can define a time varying uh, boundary condition, but we're not doing that here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So for my window, as it's the outlet of the room, so I defined it as a pressure equal to zero. And I can show you also the initial conditions. Here I defined the volume as scalar equal to zero. So these are my boundary conditions uh, from the best practices that uh, we already uh, mentioned in the first part and as a review in this presentation. Now I'm going to talk about um, some 
tricks of post-processing the uh, scalar mixing analysis. And for example, um, as a first one, um, um, I know from some documentation that if uh, the volume of air uh, contains uh, more than uh, yeah more than five percent of methane, so there is a danger of explosion. So what I have done is I created ISO volume and set the, the minimum value to 5%. So I can see uh, how much volume of uh, more than 5% of methane is uh, occupying the room. Before animating this, I am going to show you how to use the um, ISO volume. So you go to uh, results tab. Okay, I have here a plane already. I'm going to delete it. Go to ISO volume, add, and then edit. And I can use the scalar variable. So I set the minimum to 005. Okay, so you can see here how more than 5% of methane are occupying this space. Okay, so I can show you here the results of the animation. Uh, I run the <clears throat> I run the model transiently over three hours, and the results that uh, I have uh, just showed you uh, it was uh, after the three hours, and the animation is displayed uh, from 15 minutes to uh, three hours. So here is it. You can see so it's. And three hours, you can get more than five percent of the methane uh, into the room. Just I want to uh, to mention that uh, the dimensions of the room are um, the real ones, like a standard um, kitchen dimensions. So um, another useful um, file that you can use in CFT uh, to, to get information about the scalar analysis or other, um, other analysis, it's the summary file. You can find it under the results tab, and then you click on the uh, summary file. Uh, when you open it, you, you have to scroll down till you get these statistics of scalar one. It gives information about uh, the value range and how much, uh, or the, the percent of volume occupied by this range. Uh, for example, uh, if I'm interested in uh, seeing what is um, uh, the biggest percent of volume, what is the range of the biggest range, uh, biggest percent volume occupied uh, by methane in this room, I would say it's 75% and the range is between 5% and 10% of methane. Yeah, you can you can take um, a lot of information out of from here. So it depends on the needs of the user. And then a second method, probably you're rather interested in um, manipulating data of scalar uh, over a plane. So you can do it by creating a plane, then you click uh, on the right mouse button and then select shaded grid so you can have a grid uh, with points. And if you edit this, you go to the edit, you can refine this, uh, uh, this grid so you get more points on it. And you can save, you can click on save table and you're going to have a CSV file where you found data about the fraction, uh, the fractions of uh, scalar on uh, every node of this grid. And velocity, so it's a, a very good way to manipulate data. And Marwan um, is going to demonstrate how to do it uh, live with you. It's very useful. So now um, I'm going to switch to the, uh, the methods of the, uh, when I have the information about uh, the fraction of methane uh, in PPM. So just I want to, to note that uh, PPM, it's, it's just as percent, 
but just as percent means out of 100, part per million means out of million. So I take the value I have, uh, 47,500 ppm of methane, and then I divide it by 1 million, and I can get um, the, the value of the scalar uh, at my inlet. So for um, in comparison to the other uh, method, when I have 90, uh, in percent, I just uh, change uh, this value uh, 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 0 0.95 with uh, 00475. And the same thing, it's this exactly the same pro work process, but just uh, here I need uh, information about uh, methane fraction and PPM rather in percent. Um, a very useful uh, post-processing um, uh, method is um, when I'm interested in, in seeing the, uh, the scale uh, in PPM, so it's better to, to change it, to, to change the scale. If I keep it uh, like I have done it here, I will have a scale ranging from, um, I, I will have a scale in the order of uh, 10 uh, epsilon minus uh, 6. So it's not going to be like uh, very precise for, for the user if he's interested in, 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 a, in a precise value. Um, in this way, uh, you, can, you have to go to, um, to the Setup tab and then click uh, on the Simulation and then click on the Custom Result Quantities. And here you can add equations. For example, I want to see my uh, my uh, quantities in ppm rather in scalar with uh, scale uh, with an order of uh, one million or, or um, ten uh, epsilon minus six. So uh, what I'm going to do is to create a new equation, uh, give it a name, a unit, and then. Uh, the value of the equation, so here I have SV, SV refers to the scalar variable, and I multiply it by 1 million. Then, to use this equation, I will go to the results tab, and then uh, look for it in the variable, and then click on it, and then I will get my scale and ppm. I can show you this example. I can, for example, here do it uh, for the percent. So here I have used the scalar variable. I'm in the results. I will go in the quantity. And then, or I can begin by from the beginning. So here you go to the custom result quantities. Here I have created two, one for the PPM and then for the fraction and percent. So those are, For, those are not too complicated. One is multiplying the scalar by yeah. 1 million and the other multiplying the scalar by 100 to get the PPM and the percent. Yeah, exactly. uh, but you can actually create more complicated custom results, you know, uh, by using yeah, operators like, and so on. Yeah, it's like, for example, calculating uh, power or any, any variable you want to see and it's not figuring here. So, when I change here, and fraction, yeah, this is the ISO volume, um, because this one wasn't. So here is it. You can see how my range is in, in percent as I already defined from the beginning, from the result quantities. So I think it's really very useful. And um, if you need more details about how to use the custom result quantities dialog, you can uh, click here and uh, um, read uh, along our documentation. Now I'm going to um, hand the presentation to Marwan. And before that, I think you have some questions to ask the, the attendees, isn't it, Marwan? Yeah, we have some poll questions here. Um, they make sure you're still with us. <laughs> um, so let's go with the first one. I'm going to launch that poll. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, so how often do you use scalar mixing analysis in CFD? Well, you can select one of the options here. Never, rarely, often. And what is scalar mixing anyway? <laughs> <laughs> so we'll give the attendees some time to select their answers. Okay, this is cool. A lot of people are participating here. Yep. So if you still didn't vote, you can vote. It's just for us. All right, most of you have voted. Um, so 15% never use it, 60% rarely, 20% use it often, and 5%, this is news to them, which is good. <laughs> yeah, um, for the 5%, I would say I would really uh, recommend watching our first part of the scalar mixing analysis. It's very simple, not complicated, so it's we're going from the first step, and the second part, it's like the second step with some difficulties in it. Okay, so these are the Thanks results of the poll here. Thanks for participating. Yeah. Uh, but wait, there's more. <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, so let's go to the next poll here. And that's if you do use Scalar, uh, what do you use it for? Fluid mixing, air quality check, smoke analysis, or some other use? Okay, let's take a look at the results. Um, Are you sharing them, Marwan? Yep. Okay. So we got 47% use it for fluid mixing, 24% for air quality check, 12% for smoke, and other applications, 24%. Cool. And you have the, the biggest percent more one <laughs> yeah it's fluid mixing so we're gonna All go is yours. An example. <laughs> <laughs> and our last uh, poll question here mm -hmm. um, it's not about scalar or mixing or anything like that it's just a general poll question where do you go for help if you need help with CFD where do you go and you have these uh, four options five options actually so Product documentation, technical support, it's us, Autodesk community, all these, or you're a superhero. You don't need help. <laughs> we'll give it a few more seconds here. Mm -hmm, it's give okay. a chance for everyone to reply. All right, let's take a look at the results. Okay, 22% hmm. uh, go for the product documentation, 17% call, contact us, keep us in business here. 4% <laughs> go to the community. Actually, the community is a very good resource. Um, and you can browse it and see what other people are looking for. You might find answers to questions you never knew you had. Um, yeah. And it's very useful. I yeah, agree. Yeah. Fifty seven percent um use all these options. I don't know if that totals up to one hundred percent. If not, the the rest are just you know, if they didn't answer, they were just too humble to say that they're a superhero. <laughs> but this is great if fifty seven percent answer that they use all the options, this is great. Excellent. Um so am I the presenter now? 
Yeah, you should be the presenter. All right, excellent. Um, thank you, Amal. So our next example here, our next model is mixing. And this is going to be mechanical mixing, not mixing, just introducing two fluids and let them mix on their own. This is actually going to use a mixing blade that goes down into this tank that has two volumes of fluid, one with scalar zero, and volume one here is scalar zero, and the other one is scalar one, or vice versa, we'll see and we're going to use motion to rotate that blade and cause the mixing. So let me go ahead and start the setup here. We're going to start it from scratch. Um, we're going to go in here and, oops, let's go to this file and just call it mixing. Uh, there are some edges to be merged. We'll merge them. And the material, uh, this one here for the blade, that's going to be stainless steel. So we're going to edit that. It's going to be solid. Uh, where's glass? Stainless steel. All right, stainless steel. These two are going to be the fluid. I'm going to start with water, then I'm going to go edit. I'm going to create my own. I'm going to save it locally. I'm going to call it mixing fluid. And the viscosity, I'm going to make it twice as much as water, basically. I'm going to go in here and make that 0 0.02. Apply. And the Density is going to be a function of scalar in this case. I'm going to go over here to density. So one is going to be heavier than the other. It's going to be piecewise linear as a function of scalar. And I'm going to delete all these guys here. Just go with two rows. Basically, density of one if the scalar is zero and denser for scalar equal to one. Marwan, can you explain for the viscosity why you chose to, to be constant? Um, no, I mean there's no particular reason why I chose it to be constant. I just wanted to make the visco uh, the uh, scalar affect the density and not uh, the viscosity. Okay. You, you can definitely make the viscosity also a function of scalar. In that case you would go um, yeah, you can show, here. like, demonstrate yeah. how, just sure. uh, as a review. Yeah, instead of that being a constant, um, you can make it piecewise linear or any of those other functions. Um, where's, uh, piecewise linear. Okay. Or polynomial. Where did that go? Oh, here we go. Piecewise linear. And you can make it a function of temperature, pressure, scalar, or strain rate, we're going to make it a scalar, and you can yeah. say, say viscosity 0 0.015 for scalar 0, for instance, and 0 0.02 for the scalar of 1. That is yeah, perfect, acceptable. Mm -hmm. yeah, if, yeah, if you make one property as a function of scalar, that doesn't mean you used up your scalar. You can make another property as a function of scalar as well. Yeah, as we already mentioned, it depends on the uh, user need. If you're interested to uh, to make the the viscosity change with scalar, so you can go with it. It's it depends. Yeah, they can both be a function of scalar, and of course, as Amal mentioned, you want to make sure that you go here and I'm sorry here and make that material environment variable. So those changes are actually taken into consideration. Um, next, I'm going to specify some initial conditions. Um, I believe the top fluid was a scalar of 0, which is this volume here. I'm going to change that to volume and apply a scalar of 0. Oops. Scalar of zero to this guy here, and 
a scalar of one to the bottom volume. So these are initial conditions. Of course, since our purpose of the analysis is to see the mixing, these would be initial conditions and not boundary conditions. I only have one boundary condition on this model, which is a pressure of zero up here. This way, there can be velocities going in and out, even though we don't expect anything to go in and out, but uh, it's not a closed lid, basically, which it can if you want it to be. Um, but for the analysis I ran, I used the pressure of zero. Next is the more fun part, which is defining the motion. And by the way, the um, there's a section in the documentation that talks about how to set up motion best practices on motion. I highly I recommend that you visit that page if you haven't already done that in the past. So for that, we're going to go to the motion button. And of course, the only thing available for motion would be the parts that were defined as solids. In this case, just the blade. We click on edit. Um, and it's also a good practice um, to create the blade outside of the fluid volume and then push it down. Uh, the reason behind that is you can control the mesh better if it's outside. Um, it will still mesh the full volume fluid even though the blade is inside of it because it knows its motion, but you get a better mesh if the blade um, is outside. You can have this blade meshed finer or coarser. Um, it doesn't have to match up here. In this case, we're going to have both uh, combined, linear and angular, because we're going to push it down linearly, then we're going to rotate it with an angular motion. Um, in this case, the direction is going to be in the y direction for the linear. And I'm not going to use an initial position. I'm going to go and oh, before I do that, let me set the axis of rotation. That's going to be the y as well. And the center of rotation, you can either type in a value or we can select this. You can type in a value or select a surface. I'm going to select a surface, which essentially would be 0, 0, 0. So I'm going to zoom in and select this. And the center of this surface would be the center of rotation. As you can see, just the way this was created, it's pretty much 0. Y is inconsequential. And Z is zero. So let's go into edit and specify what kind of motion we're going to have. As far as linear motion, that's going to be table, not reciprocating. And the distance is going to be minus 160 centimeters. We're going to take it down into the fluid at time zero. And it's going to be constant. We just push it down and keep it down linearly at time equals 10 seconds. As far as the angular motion, that's also going to be a, fun, a table. And it's going to be degrees versus second. And the angle is going to be at time 0. The angle is 0. Two seconds into the analysis, I'm going to uh, have it go one revolution, 360 degrees, and 10 more revolutions in the next eight seconds. So at time equal to 10, so eight more seconds. And it's going to go 10 revolutions. So the total would be, we add 3,600 to 360, so we get 3,960 uh, degrees. I can plot that. So in the first two seconds, it's going to go 360 degrees, one revolution. And the next eight seconds, it's going to go um, for 10 revolutions. Uh, that's all that is involved in setting up the motion here. Um, it is not flow driven. We definitely want, don't want to check these boxes. Um, the flow is actually driven by the motion and not vice versa. I'm going to click Apply. Next, it is important to have a certain level of mesh in this, a little finer mesh than you would get with the default. So I'm going to go with uh, auto size. 
the mesh is fine enough on the blade. We can probably even go with a coarser mesh if we wanted to. Um, that would be fine. Um, so we can go in here. I didn't change it actually in the uh, CFZ file that I posted to this. So I'm going to leave it as it is. But you could definitely make that coarser if you wanted to. Now as far as the fluids, we want to make that finer. And what I did is uh, selected the two volumes here and moved the slider down, something like this. And apply changes and spread changes. So we definitely want to have a finer mesh here. Next, we're going to go to the solve dialog. This is going to be a transient analysis. Time step size, if you hit calculate, it will calculate um, time step size for you. And I went ahead and changed that a little bigger. I made it 0 0.0075. There's no need to go that fine. I'm going to run this um, to stop at 10 seconds. And time steps to run in this case is going to be a negative one. So it's either time time to stop how many seconds you want to run it for or how many iterations. Okay, so you set one to an unzero value and the other to a negative value. Save intervals. I'm going to save this every uh, 20 steps. Under physics. I'm going to go to advanced and say that I want to consider scalar and I will set the certain diffusion coefficient. And I believe that is it for the setup here. And of course we click on solve. This did take quite a bit of time to run. So I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to pull up the analysis that had already run. In this case, I had three volumes, by the way. Um, we can hide that one. And the one that I just set up, I only have two. I, th this top one was suppressed, by the way. And what we are looking at here is the scalar variable. We can look at the velocity if we want. Looks like this. Um, let's add a couple of planes here. Let's add a plane. And I have a very good mesh, Marwan. Yeah, let, let's show the mesh. That's yeah. I'm glad you mentioned the mesh. Um, edit shaded with mesh. So this is the mesh that I use in this one. I'm not quite sure if it's exactly the same as I had set up just a minute ago, but it would be something similar, a fine mesh. Hmm. Nice. Thank you. And if we look at the scalar variable here, that's what it looks like. So we can definitely see that it had mixed. If we go to the first time step here, obviously, Scalar 0 up here, the blue, scalar 1 down here. And as the analysis progresses, and you can see the blade rotating, it's a bit slow, but you can see actually I have an animation that shows how the scalar, uh, yeah, how scalar is changing with time here in my. PowerPoint presentation. This here goes through the setup steps I had went through, just for reference. This uh, image shows a couple of cut planes, the scalar on a couple of cut planes, the one that we were just looking at now, basically, and a horizontal cut plane somewhere in the middle of the blade. And I also added some uh, particle traces here. And you can see how it's whipping around due to the motion of the blade. This here shows the animation.
Uh, Marwan, for how much time uh, did you run it? Well, the duration of the analysis was for 10 yeah. seconds. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. This is nice. So it's very fast. It's like faster than mine. <laughs> <laughs> But it took a while. No, I mean, it, the analysis itself took a long time to finish. But the duration. Yeah, but I meant, yeah, the duration of the mixing mm -hmm. process. Yep. Okay. Um, one thing I wanted to show you here, which ML mentioned, is when you go into a cut plane and define a grid and export the results and we would do that if you wanted to calculate the coefficient of variance which is defined as the uh, standard deviation divided by the mean and I'm not sure why I didn't take my Greek letters here but this is sigma divided by mu standard deviation divided by mean um, so if I go back to my results here and we will use this plane go to edit and we'll go to shaded with grid and let's move this out of the way a little bit and make the grid tighter like this let's say and save the table uh, let's save it actually here and we'll call this scalar grid it's a CSV file we'll save that and we can just double click on it it will open in Excel and you see what you get are the velocities these are the grid points here X Y and Z the velocity at each grid point and the scalar variable. The reason why we're getting scalar variable is that's because this is the result that we are looking at. We are looking at the scalar variable. Um, the CSV file actually, oh, that's good. Um, so to calculate the mean, so that's going to be equal to the the average of all these numbers. That's it's a lot of values here. That's fine. I'll just scroll all the way down. So that's my mean, and let's just copy this. I will change that to the standard deviation. And to calculate the coefficient of variance, that'd be the standard deviation. So that's going to be equal to this divided by the mean. And that would be your stand, uh, coefficient of variance, 1.12. Um, anything else I wanted to show? No, that's all I wanted to show in this example. Um, this is so interesting, this, really. Yeah, um, this shows you maybe if you want to design the shape of the blade, um, you can see how effective it is in mixing your fluid. Yeah, um, the performance of the mixing. The, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or how long would it take to get a good mix inside the uh, vessel? Yeah. For a certain design of the blade. Um, let's see, do we have any questions? So, does anyone have questions regarding what we already presented? I don't see any. 
Ah ja, it comes. Oh, okay. Can the so so the question is can the scalar be um, a solid particle? Um, as far as I know, it should be fluid. What no, it it can't be a solid particle. But maybe what the uh, what the question really is, if you wanna like have some, if you wanna study the contamination, you would actually do a particle trace with mass add to the particle trace. Maybe that's right. The answer yeah, probably to this is. question. Yeah, you you would have to do particle traces and, and masses and see how they go. Um, ah, he added um, the user added um, such as from combustion. Actually, I think we have um, it. It belongs to the uh, smoke analysis uh, topic. I think, Marwan, we have already a webinar talking about the smoke yes. analysis. Yes, yeah. if you look on YouTube, there is a webinar on smoke analysis. But to answer the question, the scalar uh, couldn't be w with solid, it should be with fluids. It's uh, either liquid or uh, gas. That's right. Anything else? So feel free to ask questions. You're very welcome. Yeah, we should put this slide. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed, um, especially the part of Marwan because uh, most of the people were uh, applying the scalar analysis and the uh, fluid mixing. So. It should be 26, actually. Yes. Thank you, everyone, for attending. And Thank you very much. Sure, yeah. Make sure to go on YouTube and check out the other videos we have for CFD and any other Autodesk product that you might be using. And we'll see you on the next web webinar.